Bonaduce Life Coach. Danny Bonaduce. It is time for Danny Bonaduce Life Coach. Give me a call right now, 1 800 252 1025. That's the phone number. Or you can email us at lifecoach at kzok.com. Life Coach brought to you by our friends at Goldberg Jones Divorce for Men. Call 1 800 Divorce. I believe this morning we'll be starting off with an email. We will. And I just want to remind you when you make the call this morning to 800 252 1025, change your name if you would like to. It certainly doesn't matter. To the life coach. Right, right, right. If you're calling up to say, I, I just got herpes from some guy, uh, what should I do? You could change your name to Becky unless your name is Becky. Exactly. And I'll tell you what to do. We've got an email here uh, from George in Lakewood. I have three months sober after many years of drinking. I have heard the life coach's encouraging stories over the radio, to th- and I have his stories to thank for my sobriety. I am attending regular meetings, but I can't imagine going to them for the rest of my life. I feel like the meetings are becoming a crutch. Will it get easier? Will I someday be able to stop attending but still stay sober? Stay Stober? sober? <laughs> you know, apparently one of us has been drinking already this morning. Man. It's only 7.35, Sarah. Oh <laughs> so he wants to know, uh, will he be able to stop going to meetings or is that just the way it is? Well, I was just about to say the only experience I can give you is my own, but that's not true. Uh, I have friends with 25 uh, years sobriety uh, that I just talked to the other day, the lovely, and he made no bones about this, so I wouldn't be telling the story. My friend uh, Bob Rivers has 25 years sober, and I, you know, I called him the other day, and we were having a talk, because I was having a kind of a difficult time about a month ago, and we talked about it, and he's he's one of those guys who says, it does get easier, it does get easier. Me, I, I for me, but I've only been sober four years, and it's easier than it was, but it's not easy yet. But the, cha- the, the thing I'm saying is, with obviously with time, and time is the answer to so many of the questions for life coach. Just give it a minute. The yeah, it will get easier. And you say the uh, meetings are starting to become a crutch. That's because they should. You know that that <laughs> that term. It's becoming a crutch. T- comes from an actual crutch that it gives support. Well, they're they're necessary. Those crutches. Crutches can be a completely necessary part of your life to lean on. And leaning on the meetings is not a bad idea. So yeah, it will get easier. And by the way, uh, how can this guy get a hold of me? Can he email the station with his phone number or email address or something like that? Uh, George and Lakewood could uh, probably send an email. It would be the best thing to I do. I sent an email with a contact information for you, and I'll, I will start, I'll go to a couple of meetings with you right there. I, I'm kind of in slacking, so I will help it out in that way. And that's the, find, the thing you'll find about being sober is those of us that are sober really equal, uh, e- eager to share. And for those of us that have been way sober, way longer than me, are willing to help the rest of are a crutch because that's a good idea. Keep going. And when you go to meetings, do you automatically get a sponsor or do you have to ask for a sponsor? Uh, at the beginning of the meeting, there's a lot of, uh, not rules, but uh, traditions that they go through. And one of them is if you if you have been all, through all 12 steps and you're willing to be a sponsor, please raise your hands. And everybody raises their hands. And then people that need a sponsor go up to those people that raise their hands and say, can you help me out, brother? So maybe... The next step for George, if he doesn't have a sponsor, would be getting one. It's very to good. Help him. It's like you've been there. That's a very good call. <laughs> I'll go to a meeting with you and you'll leave with a sponsor by the end of the day. Well, I'd imagine having that helps when you've got somebody to talk to, then maybe it's not all well, about the meeting. That's what the meeting is. It's somebody to talk to. It's a gigantic shoulder to rest your, your head on. If you've got a question of any kind for the life coach, if it's work or rela- relationships, anything you're going through, let the life coach help you at 800 252 1025. Uh, and you could always email lifecoach at kzok.com. Pat and Linwood sent an email. A while back, a friend did me a favor, a pretty big one, and there was an expectation that I would reciprocate later. At first, I was eager to find a way to repay my friend's kindness, but now time keeps going on, and I'm less enthusiastic about finding a way to help her. Is there a statute of limitations on favors, or do I still owe her one? You do. You still, that's that's not even a difficult call. You absolutely, because, you know, what you were dying to do, it means at the moment of impact, when this uh, thing happened in your life, that was the moment that all your emotions were correct. I'm dying to repay her. She helped me out so bad. And, uh, you know, some of that stuff can eat me up. You know, I probably mentioned this. I stole $400 from Sushi on Sunset when I was working there. Ten years later, because I, I thought about it all the time, I went and paid it back. The stuff will eventually eat at you, you know. It's you, the, every day that you don't do right by this young lady, you're doing wrong, and it's wrong that's going to bother you. She came through. How would it be if the people that we neglected, all the people that would come through for us, nobody would ever come through anymore? I think my, I, and the, you didn't say how difficult it is to pay her back, but you need to. Or, or people are going to, it's all karma with that man, and you absolutely have to pay her back. 
If you've got a question for the life coach, you still have time to make the call to 800-252-1025. Elijah and Olympia, you're on with Danny Bonaducci, life coach. Hey, Elijah, how you doing? Hey, great. What's up? Hey, um, yeah, I just wanted to say, man, that, um, you know, congrats. You know, what a, what a difference from Power 92 to wow. what you're doing now. That's the, yeah. that's the radio station I was working to in Phoenix when everything it's, went to hell in a handbasket, uh, man. <laughs> absolutely. You know, and I wouldn't say that it sounds like you've been through a lot, and, um, Man, you really gained a lot of whiskey. Well, thank you. Um, there's actually a, a connection that, that we have as well. And, you know, although I wasn't directly involved... Um, if you turn out to be the transvestite from Phoenix, I'm going to be very no, upset. No, absolutely not. Absolutely <laughs> not. And, and I see you, too, on, um, on that World's Dumbest yeah, quite yeah. a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, and then of course you know they throw that in there once in a while the other comedians and I crack up but because I know all the stories and all everything. All right, but. now back to whatever it is that you and I have in common or why you called me. Um, well, just because I wanted to say first of all my apologies for um, I don't know if you remember about your car, the IROC. Yeah. Yeah. Did you um, steal my car? No, I did not. I did not. But. What ended up happening, and, and this is a crazy story, if I could tell you real quick. Real quick, though, bro. Um, okay. Um, I would like to talk to you more as well, if, if that's at all possible, because I think you're a great guy. Well, thanks. And, uh, yeah. Paul, put him on hold when we're done, and Givens, can you get his number for me? Thanks, you guys. <laughs> um, yeah, so um, there were some people, apparently, that had stolen your car, um, but they had the keys to it, but they brought it to us, and they were saying that um, it was from somebody that owed them money, and they were going to sell it and get the the guy would get his insurance or whatever, blah, 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 just some stupid story. I didn't even know it was yours, who it was, or whatever. Um, to be honest, when, even when they mentioned your name at first, I didn't even know um, who Danny Bonaduce was. And then I remembered after they said from Partridge Family. That'll but, do um, it. Yeah, yeah <laughs> right. But um, so... Elijah, did you run a chop shop? No, no. What it was was they had the car, and I mean, it was a brand new car back then, and it was a really nice car. It was know, a really nice pilot. car, man. It was really nice. That's the car, car I outran the cops in. I was just telling <laughs> you guys about <laughs> no. this morning. That was that one. Oh no, really? Yeah. Wow. By the wow. way, my apologies to all the cops. I didn't mean to. It was a bad part of my life. <laughs> <laughs> right. So yes, yeah, so what happened was, was I, I went along for the ride, you know, and they took it to in some my under, undercover cops. They took it to some undercover cops. That had actually. Uh, well, I, I'll tell car. you. I'll tell you this, Elijah, and then we have to get right to the meat of your question. Uh, this turned out to be a big deal. I don't know that you know this or not, but your friends were a part of a huge organized car theft ring, and that's why you were involved with an undercover. Car. It was a sting. They've been after that ring for a really long time. So that's how it happened. Now, now I got to get to you, Elijah. You have to tell me why you call. What can I help you with? Well, it's my smoking. You know. Yeah. I mean, I smoke bad, and I smoke the roll rolls because they're cheap. You know. Well, that's a myth. You're smoking uh, uh, the ones you roll, which have no filter, which everybody thinks they're going to kill you a lot faster. They're not, really. They're, everything uh, um, you get with filters, it's not that big of a deal. They say with light cigarettes, they're so much better for you. They have holes in the filter, little dots of holes, and they're exactly where you would grip the, the filter, so you cover them up with your fingers. They're all, it's, all, it's all bad, Elijah. Uh, so is your question for me, what's the best way to quit smoking? Yeah. Well, here's what I would recommend. Uh, and, and do it all before cancer and mouth cancer and all that stuff. Do uh, you ever see those people on TV with colostomy bags and the new You Better Quit Smoking commercials? It's awful. The guys that take their teeth out. You should get to this. I can't believe anybody still smokes, but it's so hard. Uh, I did not do this, but I, I would recommend from what I've heard, Chantix seems to be an incredible way to go. Uh, you got to go to your regular MD to get your Chantix. Having said that, I used um, the patches, the Nicorette patches and the Nicorette gum. I really uh, recommend. But these are the things where science has worked out how to make your addiction manageable. It really is possible to quit. Just don't flip out when you fail for the seventh time. That's what it's going to take. So I'm going to say the Chantix, the patches, the gum, everything you got, uh, even nicotine lollipops, my brother and you will probably quit smoking. Thanks, Elijah. Good luck to you, Elijah. And the next caller on with the Life Coach is Sabrina on Camino Island. Hey, Sabrina. Hello. Hello. So, I haven't been on an airplane in over 20 years. I'm scheduled to fly on one on Sunday, and I'm scared to death that I'm going to have a panic attack and be arrested as a terrorist. <laughs> well, you don't <laughs> want that. I'm telling you that right now. Here's the first thing you want to do. do you, how do you feel about hypnotism? Uh, I, I've, I've had it tried on me, and it doesn't work. I, and I don't want to take 
I don't want to take any drugs or alcohol because that's not conquering anything. That's just well, you, know, you know what, Sabrina? I don't know that, that you have to conquer it. Um, I was talking to the wife last night. Her sister didn't have any drugs or an epidural or anything during childbirth. And everybody's going to sit around and pat her on the belly and say, how oh, amazing you are. That you could endure that. Why would you endure that? That sounds crazy to me. Don't do that. These, these, uh, these sedatives, they are for exactly what you're going through. You don't deserve to fly in the air, terror that you're going to die at any second. You absolutely should get over, and you should get over the fact that there's some kind of downside to taking a, well, you probably shouldn't even take a 10 milligram volume, uh, 5 milligram volume, going to sleep, take it uh, 15 minutes before you get on the plane. Uh, take and try, get on your flight and you'll do all right. And by the way, talk to your doctor because, you know, he'll prescribe it for you. When you say terror, he'll prescribe it for you. You're a wonderful girl. He doesn't, an MD doesn't want you in terror, but he'll tell you the other ways to take it successfully. But somebody made these drugs for a reason, Sabrina, and you should avail yourself of them. Good luck, Sabrina. I appreciate the phone call. And she should probably not be that scared to fly because statistically... You're more likely to get eaten by a great white shark that already ate three other people while getting struck by lightning. Exactly. And that's a statistical <laughs> fact. I wouldn't just make that stuff up. That's all the time we have for Life Coach. Uh, Life Coach is brought to you by Goldberg Jones Divorce. A man called 1-800-DIVORCE.